don't slip in that mud. Hello. Hey, girly. Hey, Gretchen. Hi. Okay, this is the one that I need to take a look at. These tiny goats just kill me. They're so cute. I'm on day two of tiny goat ownership and today we we're figuring out the milk stand. Uh, several of you suggested the possibility of building kind of like a booster on our current milk stand where they could stand on that and then reach in. And we're gonna try that because that's a great idea and uh, that would save us from having to um, build a new milk stand. We did figure out we have the stuff to build a new milk stand if it comes down to that, but it's just a time issue. Uh, because it keeps raining and we keep having these little periods like right now where it's not raining um, but yeah we want to do other things other than build something that we might not need so this little mama here uh, I noticed that her udder was looking really lopsided and I've just been seeing her babies nurse on one side uh, it might not be an issue maybe I'm just not seeing them nurse on the other side but I want to get her on the stand and maybe milk her a little bit just to make sure that she doesn't get engorged and get an infection all of these goats are first timers so this should be fun <laughs> I gotta learn how to milk tiny goats with tiny little teats and they have to learn how to be milked we'll figure it out together Regina here is probably the most standoffish now I oh hello sir would you like some attention <laughs> okay well here you go um Regina she's very sweet but she's not quite as like doesn't like being touched quite as much as the other ones do her baby's also older so um I will have to put the baby in a separate stall tonight in order to milk her in the morning. Can y'all see how much her udder is hanging down on the right side? Sometimes for some reason, uh, baby goats will do that. It's, it's more common whenever a doe just has one baby uh, that one, the baby will just favor one side and make the udder really lopsided. Um, it's a little unusual for this doe to have two babies that are really favoring one side. So I want to milk her and make sure that there's not any infection going on. She just had these babies, so I'd be very surprised if she already had mastitis. That usually takes a little while to settle in. And I'm hoping that it's just like a preference thing, that they haven't been showing this side preference. And what you do when this happens is you just make sure you milk that side out morning and night so that it continues to produce. And usually what will happen is as the babies get older and more aggressive in nursing, um, especially if you do have two and they want to eat at the same time, that side will end up getting uh, nursed on. You just gotta make sure to keep the production up in the meantime. Nestle over here, one of my big girls, the really pretty spotted one, she actually has a really lopsided udder because her first freshening, she had a single buckling that would only eat off of one side. And I did milk it morning and night, but she was also learning to be milked. And uh, she was a pretty wild goat. She hadn't been handled very much. And just the combination of that, I just, I don't think that I got it milked as thoroughly as I needed to. And her udder has just never been normal since then. She's a super heavy milker, um, but for whatever reason, I don't know if that damaged it, or maybe she just was kind of a little defective and that's just how it was anyway. But she milks like half a gallon off of one side and then maybe like half a pint off the other side now when she's in milk. Whatever the cause of that was, I would like to keep this mama from having udder issues like that. So I wanna make sure I can get her up and get her milked if possible. <laughs> it's been pouring down rain all day um, so our animals haven't been fed yet and they're usually fed a few hours ago so that's what the chorus is about they're hollering at us because they think we're neglecting them. Pigs finally stopped hollering and they saw us out here and were screaming, but they're used to having been fed by now, but I didn't want to feed them in the rain and their food get all wet. So I made them wait. And if you listen to their side of the story, you would think that I was a horrible, horrible person for it. See?
something to stand on. They all gotta get on it. So what's your plan? I need to build a platform to put the Nigerian dwarfs on so they can reach the... What's that called? Grain bucket. Neck stopper. Head stopper. What's it called, really? I don't know. I don't know either. The part that keeps their head in where the feet is. They two small legs. <laughs> They're liking the little stack of wood you brought out. They were jumping all over it. <laughs> I guess we'll have to build a little playground next. Yeah. Look at that. This man just whipped this together and as long as it took for me to go make a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna give this a shot. Now, this is obviously still the same size hole, but we had wrapped this with a towel and like vet wrapped it um, a little while ago because when we got the La Manchas, they didn't have external ears. And so they could actually pull their heads back through whereas the Nubians had the ears to stop it. And we're gonna have to just try this out with the Nigerian dwarfs, I think this will be fine because they have horns. So I don't think they're going to be able to pull their head out of this. If though um, th the hole is too small, we can just wrap the other side. This won't be an issue when we can just run to the store and buy all the materials that we need uh, to do something differently. But in the time being, we are trying to limit any exposure of going into public because of the virus and because that's just what's been asked of us. Um, so we're staying home and that means we're trying to be as resourceful as possible. I'm trying to get this done with these goats while it's not raining, but it's about to start pouring any minute. Uh, this milk stall is a mess. Maybe they'll surprise me and be perfect angels. Um, I don't have very high hopes that I'm going to milk anything usable during this time uh, because I am training these goats to be milked and that's a process uh, that often involves hooves in the milk or the milk spilled on the stand. So I'm um, normally, like if I were doing regular milking, this space would be a lot cleaner. I would have everything cleaned out of here. Everything that would be in here would be wiped down um, because whenever you're milking for human consumption, you want it to be as clean, clean as possible. Now I do have some uh, warm water here with antibacterial soap. I will wash off their udders before I start and after I'm done because I want to make sure that they stay clean. I want to make sure that they stay sanitized and we don't introduce any sort of infection into their udder. Um, but as far as like worrying about keeping the milk clean, um, I'm not that worried about it. They've had their babies on them all day. There's probably not going to be very much milk. As long, and if they don't knock it over, I will probably just give it to the dogs. These goats have not learned yet that there's food in the milk stall. Jeremiah just walked off and left that open. And I promise you what, if my big girls, my big goats were in here, they, I've literally seen them pack 10 goats into this tiny room because they know there's food in here. And so they will push in to get it. It's actually incredibly obnoxious. They're so ready to be fed. We've, we waited now to feed them so we could do this because goats are very, very food motivated animals. And so if you're trying to do something like trim their hooves or give them a shot, or milk them especially when they're just learning to be milked giving them food to stand still is like one of the only options and if they're not hungry forget about it oh look at those babies they do that little sideways hop thing my boys came in the other day and said mom our new baby goats can dance thank you sir all right they're not milk stand trained I need the black one. Caddy, Katie, whatever. Okay, so I named my goats after Mean Girls. And in Mean Girls, the lead character, Katie, her name is spelled C A D Y. And they all called her Caddy. Um, but she was like, it's Katie. So should we call her Caddy or should we call her Katie? The reason I was calling her Caddy is because my sister in law's name is Katie, but she can share her name with a goat. Um, if we, sh if y'all think, what do you think? Which pronunciation should we go with? Should we call her Katie? I don't know. We're gonna see how she does on the milk stand. Lord help us. Open the door. There's the benefit of tiny goats. <laughs> hey baby, it's okay. There you go. Well, that works. Look you there. 
All right, now let's try to milk these tiny teats. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, all right, there we go. Good girl. It's okay. When you are training new does, now this is a little dough, so it's a little bit easier. It's a little harder when they weigh almost as much as you and they can throw their body into. When you're training a new doe, you want to use really soft tones and very deliberate movements. So like if you'll notice when I'm washing her teat, I'm holding her still and I'm not moving real fast. It's just real slow movements. It's not always possible when they start really panicking and kicking and stuff. You want to do that as much as possible. And to be frank, I'm going to just have to figure out how to milk these tiny teats. Because <laughs> my standard goats, you use your whole hand. Um, but I'm pretty sure with these goats, it's down to using, like, your thumb and forefinger. So... Hold her feet. Yeah, just hold her where she's gonna. Well, hold her body so she'll be still. I think you can probably hold her still with just her body. Hey, oh, there goes yeah. the head. This is definitely different. Her teeth are tiny. I bet you Benjamin could. All right. Oh, kitten George hasn't forgotten that there are just treats on the milk stand whenever it's we been stand. It's been a coon's age. <laughs> in the milk stand, drinking the milk. Many moons have passed. <laughs> I actually feel really good after milking her. That side is not over full. It's not hot. Um, I think that they're probably eating from it just by it wasn't really engorged. There's some milk in both sides, but um, I feel good about the fact that she um she's she's okay and that wasn't that bad i know she hopped around a lot now uh some they make a thing called a hobble where it actually like connects their legs it's like a little latch thing that latches their legs together and i have had difficult goats before that really needed something like that but i prefer not to use that um i prefer to not restrain them and i mo all but one of the goats i've ever had was able to be trained to not be restrained and that's the way i like to go i just think it's probably a more relaxing experience for them to not be restrained um and so we just keep working on it like i just have low expectations for the first handful of times these other two mamas we're just gonna put up on the milk stand feed them and i'm gonna wash their udder i don't even know that i'm gonna try to milk them today i'm not concerned about them um being over engorged or anything so we're just milk stand training hey little, little girl i'm not hopping up here I might need to put a little ramp on here. There we go. That's great, huh? Oh. She doesn't really like that. Is she going to lay down on me? Yep. Okay. I'm stand up, darling. Stand up. They're so small. Stand up, love. Stand up. Here you That's literally all I'm going to do with her. We're just washed her at her. Um, just palpated it a little bit. And I'm going to let her finish eating in peace. Uh, so that she can just build a positive connection in her mind with being on the milk stand. I think once they realize that this is where the food is, that then jumping from there to there might be a problem. Now her baby is older, so she's been just nursing a baby for a little while. We can actually milk her tomorrow. All right, give it to him outside of the stall. Okay. Maya's gonna give that little bit of milk. It has hair in it, um, and a little dirt from our struggle. Uh, but he's gonna give that to George, but not in the stall because I really don't like to reinforce to him that if he comes in there begging that he gets milk, even though he knows that's where the milk is. 
I feel pretty good about it. It's exactly what I expected it to be. Um, I fully expected when I got these does that I was going to have three first time milkers. The first year that I had goats and milk, I had six that kitted, which was crazy. It's just I got a whole herd at once. And um, I had six, five of which were first timers. And that was very, very difficult. They were full, they're Nubians, and so they were big goats. And uh, that was a very hard few weeks but once they're trained they're trained and they they remember it every year even once they're dry they they take it right back up and sometimes you have goats that just personality wise are way easier than other ones um it's just a matter of being really consistent and persistent so i have pretty low expectations for these goats over the course of the next week or so i'm just going to continue um feeding them on the stand washing their udder touching uh, their udder and just getting them used to being handled by me and then uh, once it time it comes time to start separating the babies out at night I feel like they'll be ready I'll probably still need Maya to help me by holding them uh, just to be sure but my hope is is that once we get them good and trained um, I mean obviously I'm really hoping we can get them milk stand broken enough that the kids will be able to milk them the tiny teats are something else i've not dealt with that before but uh, it's not that hard i think that very difficult for a man who has large hands to milk them um because that's trying for me i have very small hands so anyway thank you guys for hanging out with us today um on this new adventure that we're on i bless you until next time